countdown sequence. Okay, and then and then I saw well, and then on top of that, the next day after I talked to you, I was listening to Sports Talk Radio and we were talking about you know the still whole thing about and it was on national radio. And the guy was like, you know, it's ridiculous. Really and nobody corrected me. So I was like, that's why, but by doing that, they constricted, I think, by like three less people go. Because remember, they expanded the roster so more people can go since it counted because they didn't want to run out of players. Now it's like, eh, it's back to the next edition. And they finally determined it. Remember last year, or before we were here, it's how it's now back and forth each year, National League, yeah. American League. This year, it's going to be best record. So whoever of the two World Series teams make it, whoever had the better regular season record, gets home, right. which is the way it should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, well, because of the uh, 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 interleague now, you can yeah. it's a little more fair, even though it's way different. Ground gas close has the started. FTS announced AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. Gas close as is complete. DC verify F9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 1, stage 2, that's for flight. LD verify go for launch. Go for launch. Minus 30. T minus 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10. That launch board sequence. John Innsbruck again at SpaceX webcast desk here in Hawthorne, California. Again, we've had an abort at T minus 10 seconds. The countdown has been stopped. We're waiting now as the team goes through the standard abort sequence. We don't know what the cause was. We're going to listen and see what we can bring back to you. Now, this was obviously, as we heard early in the countdown, as I reported, the problem that we saw yesterday was looking good. So we think the guidance nav and control problem from the day before has been fixed. But the team right now is going through their standard abort sequence that we typically use during static fires. It's not new for us. So we're going to listen for a moment and then uh, try to come back with some more information. But as a reminder, we are at the end of the window today, so there will not be an opportunity to recycle and try to launch again later today. So let's go back to the countdown net for a few minutes and listen in. The LCM countdown received all folks. Yeah, that's what I thought.
Welcome back, John Insperker again. We're still waiting for the launch director to give an update. Uh, currently, the team is going through the safing procedure and stepping into the propellant offload steps. And we are continuing to protect a launch opportunity on tomorrow, the 4th of July. But we're waiting for just another minute or two to see if we can bring you any information about the hold itself before we end the webcast. So hang in there for another couple of minutes. We'll be back then with a final summary.
Good afternoon, good evening again from the Hawthorne headquarters webcast desk for the Falcon 9 launch of Intelsat 35E. At this time, we still do not have definitive information on what caused the scrub at T minus 10 seconds. As I mentioned earlier in the webcast, at T minus 10 seconds, that's one of the points where we routinely check a lot of data on the vehicle to make sure that everything is good to go as close to launch as we can measure it. Now, as is typical, when you have something that causes a hold in the countdown, or in this case, a scrub for the day, the first pieces of data may actually not be, you know, what you might want to call out as the cause of the hold. So that's where the SpaceX engineering team is going through, threading that information together. We have all the telemetry coming off of the rocket, so we've got plenty of information. But they're taking their time right now to understand what system they're really looking at that would be the cause of the hold. So you'll have to follow us on our social media sites as we get more information. Now as a reminder, scrubbing at T minus 10 seconds, not unusual when we test fire the rockets in Texas or even at the launch site, we run an abort sequence as it's called so that we can safe the vehicle. We've already gone through that and we have moved on into offloading propellant in order to protect another launch opportunity, possibly tomorrow, if uh, the investigation allows it to proceed. At the same time, the spacecraft team, they're going back to external power, they're checking their systems, but they report no issues right now, so they would also be good to go for the moment. So that's gonna wrap it up. We had uh, an extended countdown today. We had to wait for the weather, and we got to T minus 10 seconds before we had a hold, once again, called by the automated abort criteria, we were not able to recycle because we were out of the window. So with that, our earliest launch opportunity, again, may be tomorrow, the 4th of July here in the United States, uh, a great holiday, and we'll see whether or not we have a rocket that will be able to fly on that day. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody, thank our customer, Intelsat, the range for being up today and hopefully tomorrow to support us the FAA on licensing, and you, the viewers, for watching along with us. That's going to end our webcast for today. Hopefully, we'll be back on with you tomorrow. For now, have a good evening, and goodbye.